Hello, today we are working on multiplying special cases. This is the 7-3 quiz from Envision. Um, and so we are gonna be going through these questions. With special cases, you learned about two different types of special cases. So the first one that you learned about was called a perfect square trinomial. And with that special case, it meant that your um, binomial was exactly the same that you were multiplying. So your binomial was either a plus b squared or a minus b squared. And just as a quick reminder, when you have a plus b squared, you're not just squaring the a and squaring the b. It, that means a plus b times a plus b. Or a minus b squared would mean a minus b times a minus b. So you're taking a binomial and multiplying it times itself. With a perfect square trinomial, you can do your normal FOIL or box method, but you can also use the shortcut. And so if you have a plus b squared, the shortcut would mean that you would do a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Same idea if it was a minus b squared, there's just one little change. It would be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So you can use this shortcut when you're multiplying perfect square trinomials, or you can do your FOIL or box method. So a shortcut is only actually a shortcut if you know how to use it. Otherwise, you're gonna get lost and you're better off just going back to what you're good at, which is FOIL and the box method. Your other special case was called the difference of squares. And with this, you have a binomial that almost, two binomials that almost look exactly the same. However, one is gonna be plus and one is gonna be minus. So it uses the same numbers, but one is gonna be addition and one is gonna be subtraction. So, and it also doesn't matter which one comes first. Maybe it says A minus B or, and then A plus B. So the order of the multiplication doesn't matter. You just know it's the same binomial, but one's addition and one's subtraction. So the shortcut with this one is just to make it A squared. Oh, I don't actually need parentheses. So let's get rid of those a squared minus b squared. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like as we go through numbers one through five. Again, just like with the perfect square trinomial, if you don't remember this shortcut for the difference of squares, go back to your traditional FOIL method or box method. Let's look at number one. Which of the following is the product of five y minus three squared? Well, in this particular instance, we are only going to use the shortcut method. You could use the box method, you could use FOIL. And if you don't know what I mean by those methods, go ahead and check out my other video that I did with multiplying polynomials. So for this video, I'm just gonna work with the shortcuts, which would be a squared minus two AB plus B squared. I'm gonna start off by labeling A and B. So in this case, A is simply five Y, and B is simply three. In doing that, now I'm able to plug in my numbers. So A squared would be five Y squared. Then it's gonna be minus two, which is just guaranteed that's in every single formula. So minus two times A, which is five Y and B, which is three. Then it asks me to add B squared and B squared would just be three squared. So once you plug in your A and B, we're gonna simplify. Five Y squared, well, five squared is 25. Y squared is just Y squared. Then I'm gonna multiply everything in the middle section. So negative two times five Y is negative 10 Y. Negative 10 Y times three is negative 30 Y. And then my last number is three squared, which is nine, so plus nine. 25y squared minus 30y plus nine. So it looks like it's going to be that second answer right here, letter B. Okay, let's move on to number two. In number two, they're gonna ask us to use our difference of squares formula 
to write it out and then simplify. So it's actually like we're doing FOIL in this one. So they're saying if you have x plus y times x minus y, what would the numbers be? Well, in FOIL, let me write down FOIL as a reminder, we start with the first numbers, x times x, which would be x squared. Then we would go to our outside numbers, x times negative y, which is negative x y. I didn't write a negative because the minus is still there. Then I'm going to do my inside terms, y times x, which is just a positive x y. And then my last terms, y times y is y squared, and it's going to be a negative y squared, so minus y squared. When you use the difference of squares, where the binomials are the same, but one's plus and one's minus, you'll notice that your middle terms actually cancel out. We have a positive xy and a negative xy. So all we are left with is x squared minus y squared. And that would be your answer for number two. Let's move on to number three. In number three, we're trying to find the product of 3x minus 5 and 3x plus 5. We're going to use our shortcut method, which is the a squared minus b squared. So what I'm going to do is label my a's and b's. So in this one, your a is 3x and your b is just 5. We're not worried about the plus or minus sign. So when you multiply the difference of squares, again, a binomial that looks exactly the same, except one's plus and one is minus, you're going to take a and square it. So 3x squared. You're going to take b and square it. So 5 squared. And you're going to put a subtraction sign between the two. Let's simplify this. 3 squared is 9, and x squared is x squared always our minus sign, and then five squared is 25. So our answer is nine X squared minus 25, which is letter A. Let's move on to number four. In number four, they want us to use the following to fi or find the difference of two squares um, to find the product of 22 and 18. So what they want us to do is break down 22 and 18 into the difference of squares. Well, if you notice, 22 and 18 are separated by four, and that number right in the middle would be 20. So the number 22, you get two by doing 20 plus two, and the number 18, you get two by doing 20 minus two. Notice how it's exactly the same as our difference of squares formula. 20 and two are in both, one's plus and one's minus. So we're gonna use those numbers and plug it into what they've provided for us, 20, plus two, 20 minus two. We're gonna do exactly what we did in number two, where you are going to either use FOIL or in number three, where you use your formula, which is basically just the first number squared. So A squared minus B squared. Well, B squared, two squared is four. Or they just want me to put two squared, there we go. If you were to do 20 squared minus two squared, you would have 400 minus four, which you'll notice is the same as the answer they provide, which is 396. So they suggest this to you as a way of multiplying bigger numbers. You wouldn't know what 22 times 18 is right off the bat, but if you were to use this difference of squares formula, 20 plus two and 20 minus two, it's a lot easier to remember that 20 squared is 400 and two squared is four, and then just to subtract them. We're on to our last problem, which is number five, and it's our word problem. So looking at number five, they say there's a square picture. So I'm gonna draw a square picture. Maybe not the most perfect square, but it'll do. And it says it has a one inch frame around it. Okay, so let me draw that frame. It tells us the area of the frame is 48 inches squared and they wanna know the area of the picture. Well, they don't actually tell us the length and height of the picture, but we know it's a square. So I'm gonna label each side X. So we know it's X wide and X high. We also know the measurements of the frame. So the frame, they say it's a one inch border around. So over, oh, I'm sorry, I used my, that was weird. I used my eraser instead of my uh, pen. So over here is gonna be plus one, over here is gonna be plus one. And then for your height, plus one, and plus one. 
So we need to figure out the area of the picture. So I know my answer has to be the area of the picture. Well, in order to get the area of the picture, I'm gonna take the entire, the total area, and I'm gonna subtract the area of the frame. Sometimes when I'm doing word problems and I'm not quite sure how to set up the problem, I'll use words as my equation. And so this kind of makes a little bit more sense to me than trying to plug in the numbers. Now I know total area minus the area of the frame is gonna be the area of the picture. And what I'm gonna do now is go back and plug in the numbers to make an actual equation. The total area would be length times width. And I know the length of my frame is going to be X and then plus one, plus one, because there's a one inch border on each side. And I know the width is gonna be the same thing, X plus one, plus one. If I were to simplify that, that would look like X plus two times X plus two or X plus two squared. I know from that, I'm gonna subtract the area of the frame, which they told me. They told me it's 48. And I know it's gonna equal the area of the picture. So I don't know numerically what the area of the picture is, but I know using variables. Before I had said the length and width of my, of my picture would be X. So this would just be doing X times X, which is X squared. From here, I'm gonna simplify. So I'm gonna use my formula from before. So now I'm gonna underline that one in blue, um, which is a squared plus two AB plus B squared. So I'm gonna label my A and my B. Oh, that's not my B, that's my A and my B here. So A squared would be X squared plus two times A times B. So two times A times B plus B squared. And when I simplify that, I get X squared plus four X plus four. And then I still am gonna subtract this 48 and it equals X squared. Well, my goal is to get my X's by myself by themselves. And what I realize is I have an X squared on both sides. So if I were gonna try and get my X's by, their, by themselves, I would have to subtract X squared from both sides, which would mean that my X squares actually cancel out. It doesn't matter if I went to go subtract the X squared from the right side or from the left side, wherever you subtract your X squared, it's gonna become zero. So right now, my problem looks like four X plus four minus 48 equals zero. And I'm running out of space that should say equals zero. And what I'm gonna do is put it right over here. So I've got 4x plus 4 minus 48 equals 0. And I'm going to solve for x, which you've done a million times before in algebra. So I'm going to combine my numbers first. 4x minus 44 equals 0. I'm going to add 44 to both sides, which means I have 4x equals 44. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4 and get x equals 11. Remember what X represents. X represents the length and width of my picture, but they want to know the area of the picture. So area equals length times width. So I'm going to do area equals 11 times 11 or 11 squared. So my area would be 121. And it looks like our measurement is inches. So inches squared area is always going to be squared. And that would be the end of our quiz. First, this is seven dash three. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and have a great day.